look, we learned math in school. And I'm, and for some people, that's extraordinarily tough. We learned science in school. Like business is not more complicated than that when you're mm -hmm. reading about it, learning about it, or understanding the basics. Yeah. The reason business becomes complicated is because of emotion. Money can be complicated. Let a nerd help you. We're here to demystify the complex nature of money by getting you answers from financial nerds and whiz kids. Welcome to Ask the Money Nerds, a weekly segment of the Wealth Labs podcast where we answer your most pressing money questions. Have you been working hard, saving money, doing you know, what you've been taught to do to have a better life, but now you're trying to pay off debt and put money in retirement and working hard and getting an education and just not sure this is going to get you where you want to go? Are you concerned about the economy and watched way too many pensions disappear for others? Um, you know, are you just kind of tired at this point? Today on Ask the Money Nerds, we have a question from someone who's trying to do things different, who wants to know if there's such a thing as to invest passively in a business or other vehicle in order to generate cash flow and still minimize taxes. Chief of Staff Stolba, how was that intro? Did I do okay? I think you did very well. Look, we got all sorts of Wealth Labs cups here today. Yeah, we got you know. a lot of passion in the room, a lot of energy. This you thought was tea, and I just started <laughs> chugging it, and you're like, what? I was like, wow, so your palate can buy drinks, of BAI that. drinks. They're probably oh, not yeah. good for me, but I drink them anyway. They do. I today. love the watermelon one. Those are so good. I've been off of caffeine. I'm only doing coffee every three days. That's, you know, Sad pretty life. impressive for you. Especially since I'm an amateur barista. <laughs> you usually make lattes every amateur. morning. <laughs> I offered you a latte, but made you tea instead. Yes. Yep. Take the tea. All right. What we got going today? We got today. Mark's question yeah. today. I like Mark. Yeah. Mark says he has, it's a really great question that I, a lot of people are going to relate to. And I think like you said in the intro, there's a lot of people in my generation, our generation who watched our parents work really hard for a company. What's your generation? Generation. Awesome. <laughs> generation I'm in nerd. Between. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm in between. What's in between? I'm, I'm not You're a millennial. Exer, aren't you? I'm not a, well, Aaron, You're not a millennial. No, I'm not a millennial, but I'm just like right on the edge. I'm okay. in between the two, you know. That explains some of your behavior. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. But anyway, so my generation, um, like we did see our parents and people work for jobs for a really long time and it didn't work out for them. And so there's a lot of us who are wondering, like, I don't want to be in the same boat where I dedicate myself to a job forever and it not pan out like I hoped. So I think Mark's question hints at that. All right. Okay. Did you ask it yet? Did I miss something? No, I haven't asked I'm it waiting. yet. Here we go. Um, he says, I'm turning 38 and I'm a registered nurse. I have about $200,000 in a 403B, a 457 Roth IRA stocks and cash. I bought a house on a VA loan for 2.25% 30 year fixed. I am what I aimed for middle class. Work hard, get debt free, save and invest. A major upgrade from my previous generation, but I want to level up. I know working through my 60s, waiting for a pension and watching money I can't touch is considered safe, but based on what I'm hearing now, there is a good chance none of that could be there in the end. I have been poor and middle class, but I want to be financially independent. I hear you guys say build cash flow and minimize taxes. I'll read and listen to the advice you offer um, to get financially independent. I have many, um, but I'll just start with one question on passive investing. And here it is. Is there such a thing as a way to invest passively in a business or an other, other vehicle in order to generate cash flow and minimize taxes? All right. So first I want to say now is the better time, the best time ever to have people question everything and start creating a game worth winning. Mm -hmm. Not the game that well-intentioned preachers, teachers, the family, and friends want us to play. Right. Not the container society created for us. You know that. More, bigger, better, faster, mm -hmm. work harder, delay, defer. Mm -hmm. But really get clear about what do we want. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what it's time to ask. Like, mm -hmm. what do we really want? And when those wants coincide or collide with value creation, creating a vision bigger than our problems, discovering our hidden capital, which is our mental capital, our ideas, you know, knowledge, wisdom, mm -hmm. insights, and our relationship capital, people, networks, organizations, mentors, family, and friends. And then when we come from a place that we actually are trying to help with a loving place, like that's going to unlock a lot for Mark because he's got, you know, obviously he's a nurse. They're helping out tremendously. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I want to do more than just save and save. So, so a lot of it has to be like changing the game that we're playing. Yeah. Because the game that he was talking about to begin with was this game of like uh, a mix between play not to lose. Like, okay, I just got to get out of debt. That's playing not to lose, right? Like, I don't want to have debt. That's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. And play to win. I got to work hard 
so that one day, someday I can enjoy life. And unfortunately, we give our life away to that. You know, there's so much of our life and so much of our energy and so much of our worry and so much of our frustration wrapped in that so much of our identity wrapped in how much money do we have? How much debt do we have? What kind of cool experiences? What kind of stuff do we buy? And this just gets bombarded through consumerism. And so I think the first thing is, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Is a question that we have to ask on a regular basis. Yeah. And what do we have to give mm -hmm. is the next question. And how can we bring those together so that we become the value creators we were born to be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great time to reimagine what we want our lives to look like, you know, both now and five or 10, 30 years from now. We have the, in some ways we have the space to do that. Things are being turned upside down and they might not look the way that they always have been. So it's a great time to reimagine, get creative and like really hone in on what is it that I want my life to look like? Right. So he asked questions of passive income. And what, when people say that, what do you think they really mean? Cause I what, don't know if many people are like, I just want it come in my way and do nothing with it. What but. they mean is like recurring revenue, mm -hmm. money that comes in every month, not just one time. So yeah. there's accumulation, which is eventually I'll have this nest egg that I can start living mm -hmm. off of. That's accumulation. That's deferral. That's retirement planning. Where cash flow is, I want to have an asset that can kick off cash, not once, but ongoing. Mm -hmm. Like I can see that coming in regularly. And that's recurring revenue or cash flow, right? Yeah. That's, and that's a beautiful focus. That's a little bit more difficult to do than just set money aside and forget it or invest early, often, and always. You know, all these kind of sayings that I, yeah. that I use because it's about a little bit more intentional and being more deliberate up front, having a little patience to look at what the right deals are mm -hmm. and being willing to say no to things that aren't quite good enough and being willing to sit and not earn for a little bit of while until you find the right thing. Like it's hard for me to do that. You know me, how patient do you think of me as right? <laughs> like, quick start. you know, it's not like patience isn't the number one thing for me, but in this book, five day weekend that I co-authored, uh, we have this pretty cool thing called the passive income score sheet. So this score sheet helps you determine how active or how passive any business venture or investment is, right? So you can analyze the passive potential of any opportunity by rating these following factors and you rate them zero through five, right? Like, or maybe one is really low and five is really high potential. So will there be income soon? That's a five or will it take longer? That's a one, right? Mm -hmm. And then regular cash flow will it be predictable or sporadic. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, five, if it's predictable, one, if it's sporadic or anything in between, will the income continue for a long time? Right. Five or a limited time would be a one increasing cash flow. Can the income increase over time? So maybe if you have renters, the rents go up over time as mm -hmm. you have a business and you improve it. Do you increase your cash flow over time? Yeah. And then the next thing is question five, your personal time to manage. You know, how many hours per month of your time? None. That's a five. That's maybe you have a fully delegated, you have an infrastructure, you have a team, but you probably had to do work to get that in place. Yeah. Or, you know, it's going to require a ton of your time. That's not very passive, even if it's recurring. And then on-site management. Do you need to be there? Do you need to be on site or could you be traveling and still have this occurring? So you want to kind of score this and then, you know, any score lower than a 10 needs to be restructured or you need to figure out a way to increase the, the, the cash flow or eliminate it altogether. 10 to 20, modify it to maximize it. And anything above 25 is actually a great passive income. It's a passive income index. It's not meaning that everything is passive. Like something for nothing is problematic. Right. If you don't monitor and maintain through management, that's good. You like that alliteration? Yeah. Then, good at those. then it's just not going to, it's not going to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I think that we've been sold this bill of goods of like, Oh, I can hand my money over to this guy that does options trading. And that's going to provide cash flow. or yeah, you can get utility stocks, but how much cash flow does that really provide? Or, you know, real estate's going to be really passive. I got to tell you, it wasn't passive for me. Mm -mm. Deferred maintenance, you know, um, d going and getting the loans, putting them in LLCs, dealing with renter turnover, dealing with someone that stole our copper once, dealing with someone that slipped and hurt their hip. Like we've really got to determine what we're going to spend our time on. But if we just hand our money over, it's probably not going to be that passive. So uh, what is it that you're going to invest in? It's yeah. going to require learning about that. If you're going to acquire a business, how much do you know about that business? But we've got mm -hmm. Tim, who's one of our money nerds, acquired a business, is doing so well with that business. Yeah. He had his brother buy a business. His brother's doing so well with that business. 
and there's 418,000 of these things coming up for sale in next year. Mm -hmm. And I think as the economy tightens up and gets tougher and they stop flooding it with a bunch of money, you're going to see even better deals. People that need out because they're exhausted Mm -hmm. or their time has come and you might be able to buy into that, but you're going to have to learn about business, Mm -hmm. at least some of the basics or bring a team member along that knows that so they can help you identify it. So to have more passive income, you actually have to be more active up front. Yeah. It requires more it. action up front. Mm-hmm. Now, if someone is just starting off trying to learn about being a business owner, okay. where's a good place to start? You know, if you said you have to have some basic level business acumen to yeah. get started, right? Well, we should do a video with Rich Christensen. Yeah. That'd Rich be great. Christensen has a book called Bootstrap Business. Mm-hmm. That is an amazing book um, produced by Wizard Press, an amazing book on starting a business with no money. Mm hmm. Right. That's a beautiful book or his other book, Zigzag Principle. Yeah. Great, great books, whether you're a seasoned business owner or you're just starting one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking to buy a business, Walker Dybul, which I just interviewed him twice. His buy then build book is great for someone looking to buy a business. Mm -hmm. Look, we learned math in school. And and for some people, that's extraordinarily tough. We learned science in school. Like business is not more complicated than that when you're Mm -hmm. reading about it learning about it or understanding the basics. The reason business becomes complicated is because of emotion, Mm -hmm. because now money's involved and it's heightened fear, or you're dealing with people that have different personalities or life or economies. And so I'm not here to say that business is just smooth sailing. It's, it's a series of mistakes that we learn from and hopefully uh, continue to improve and course correct and can pop profit from, but it's less risky for people to buy an existing business with infrastructure that is profitable Mm -hmm. than it is to go out and start something from scratch. And it's easier to do that than just hope that your stock market's going to work for you Mm -hmm. because those companies, we don't know what's going on in their boardroom. We don't know what's going on, you know, with their short term reporting versus where they're really going long term and what industry changes are because, you know, 96% of businesses do less than a million of revenue. So they can be as affordable as a down payment on a home. But don't think that means that you don't have to do any work once you acquire it. The less attention, the less cash flow more than likely. Mm -hmm. And if you have uniqueness that you can bring to that, because it's like, I don't, I wouldn't go buy just any business, but I'd buy a digital business that supported wealth factory Mm -hmm. or something that would help me elevate my brand so that we could actually reach more people to give them this message of empowerment and Mm -hmm. building a life that they love and navigating this financial world without feeling wrong or bad or sad or angry or, or defeated. Like Mm -hmm. so many people want people to feel. So, so it really has to be aligned with who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's great books. Traction is an amazing book. Scale up is an amazing book. Those are a little bit like there's some advanced stuff in there. It might feel overwhelming. That's why I gave some of these other book recommendations. And we just got to reach out to Rich, get him up here and get him on for those people that want to start a business, which can start as a side hustle because his zigzag principle is really great. And, you know, Brandon Allen that works with us, he's Mm -hmm. got amazing resources with Newark Revolution that really help people out with Mm -hmm. getting started with business. So it's simply if you have the time to go get mentored by someone to offer them something that you can learn from them Mm -hmm. by offering your time so that that can help you out. I know people that go work for a business and they're the ones that acquire that business because they know that business is going to be sold sometime in the future. So there are ways to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's see if there's anything else. Are you willing to invest in yourself and your future and take responsibility for future prosperity? That's what it comes down to. Handing money over. We're not taking a lot of responsibility. We put blame somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Buying a business, buying some real estate, that takes personal responsibility. And so I really feel like my book, Budgeting Sucks, is an amazing resource for this. Mm -hmm. Right? Because in Budgeting Sucks, there are some components, especially when Win Then Play comes out or The Four Wins, we have entire sections on business. That I, you know, you saw the advanced reader group was really Mm -hmm. pro the business segment. So we have this thing called cycle of creation, which is how you start with an idea and profit up front before spending too much time or or borrowing any money. And so those are, you know, those, there's some great resources coming people's way that with Mm -hmm. that, the win and play playbook as well. But I think budgeting sucks, gets some of the foundational pieces to get you on the right footing financially so that you can capitalize on those opportunities and think Mm -hmm. a little bit differently and focus on cash flow and consider recurring revenue. Um, It's not all the answers with business, but we are going to continue to come out with podcasts and follow the link at the end of this one. And it's going to set you right where you need to be if business is the answer for you. So any final sentiments or thoughts? No, I just 
I think it's great that um, Mark reached out on his journey of up leveling his life and it sounds like he's taking personal responsibility which you know there's a lot of rub with that you know people want things yep. for free but we really have to own our lives we have to make our decisions for ourselves and be the creators of um, what we want during our time want to master your money want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances click here and check out more videos like this on money matters